You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, Days of Our Lives fans. It is Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I've got your weekly Days Prediction Edition. As always, my predictions are based on recent episode activity and official spoilers from NBC, and I'm so excited to take you through these. I've got five sizzling predictions, one for Thomas DeMera and John Black, one for Stefan, Kristen, and EJ, one for Xander and Maggie, one for Alex and Teresa, and one for Sloane Peterson. Hey, if you haven't, reach down and click that subscribe button if you haven't. And uh, let's jump right in. So my first prediction, I think Thomas Demera is going to accidentally activate the pawn, aka John Black's secret assassin side that clearly still lives inside his head. Seems like they should get him over to the ISA and get him debugged because they, they debugged Harris and now he's not brainwashed anymore. Why can't they just go undo whatever was done to John? That's got to be coming, right? All right. Spoilers for Friday, the tw- this past Friday, the 12th. Uh, Thomas found that pawn card in a book in Constantine's desk during the hide and go seek game and he lied and hid it from his dad, Chad. There are a lot of other miscellaneous spoilers long running spoilers about John and the info from producer Ken Corday a while back said there's going to be months of pawn storyline and it's going to be an expanding and growing storyline. So we're going to have lots more of this. So what's interesting is Thomas has this card. He has no idea what it is. He just thinks it's cool. But if you remember when Constantine had it in the park with John that day and he just pulled it out and he didn't even have to like say any magic words, no abracadabra and like John just boom and he trans just completely transferred over into the pawn. It's a very Manchurian candidate thing, but at least the Manchurian candidate had a trigger word, if you remember that from back in the day. I like classic movies. So we also know that on Wednesday the 17th, Constantine panics when he realizes that the card is gone. I just could totally see because John, you know, John and Thomas do cross paths and he might just show the card to John and say, oh, look what I found and then we'll activate him and then imagine depending on what the kid says in childlike innocence what could happen like I wish I had a pile of candy to eat or I'm tired of that bully at school and I wish somebody would kick his butt you know I mean the pawn would do it right this could get really interesting my second prediction I think Stefan and Kristen Demera are going to tag team big brother EJ Demera I think it's EJ the oldest I lose track because there's so many of them and they got them from so many different places next week spoilers confirm that Stefan's got a trump card to play and all the charges against him are dropped and he's a free man which is not what EJ wanted but he was going to take EJ down with him so it had to go that way so last week you know EJ was talking to the chairman of the Demera board trying to position himself saying that he could be both DA and CEO but it is not going to be that easy and by Thursday April 18th Kristen and Stefan are openly scheming to keep EJ out of that CEO chair those two are not going to let it go I mean EJ tormented Stefan with threats for months and refused to help him deal with this Clyde thing, which would have been better for everybody, including Holly. Told him he didn't care if Gabby got hurt in prison. And he has said so many nasty things to Kristen and again, you know, was mean to her when she was arguing with Nicole. And I mean, you could see how you don't want your kid around somebody who's a known druggie now because they don't know if it's one off. And realistically, it's not a one off. Holly's a drug user. We've seen it. You know, we haven't seen her using drugs since she came out of the coma, but that doesn't mean she's not or will not again. I think Kristen is within her rights to say she doesn't want her little kid around her. But you remember EJ threatened to kick her out of the house. EJ has been so high handed for months and karma is coming for him. And boy, is she not happy. My third prediction, I think Xander Cook Kiriakis is going to freak out when he hears that Maggie Horton is planning to marry skeevy Constantine Melionis. So on Thursday, April 18th, next week, Maggie decides to go all out to help Constantine stay in the U.S., which means she's going to put a ring on it. And Friday, April 19th, Maggie and Constantine talk about their upcoming green card marriage. Xander hates that guy. He doesn't trust him. He thinks he's using Maggie and abusing her good nature. And Xander's right on every single point. The problem is that Constantine has both Maggie and Sarah Horton snowed and Xander, big guy that he is, is complete putty in the hands of his beloved Sarah and her mother. He adores them both and he would do anything for them, but 
I imagine he is going to do all that he can to stop these nuptials from happening because he does not trust Constantine as far as he can throw him. My fourth prediction, I think Alex Kidiakis is going to break down and propose to Teresa Donovan. Thursday, April 18th, Alex has bad news for Teresa about Bella Magazine. It might be going under. Remember, Maggie had tried to shut it down before. She said it was just, you know, just not a viable thing, and he refused. They handed it over to Teresa, and now it looks like he might have to shut it down. And we saw Alex last week openly less while Teresa was folding her lingerie very provocatively in the living room. Just by the way, I don't know who does the set dressing and stuff like that, but she had like dark things, light things, white things, all the lingerie, like it came out of one load. You don't mix colors when you do laundry and you can't just wash and dry fancy expensive lace goodies like that. That's laundry 101. But with Alex giving her bad news at work and being so happy that she moved back home and wanting her back in his bed, I think he may just cave and pop that ring on her finger. And I do suspect within the next few months they will be married, but we'll see. My fifth and final prediction, Sloane Peterson is ready to crack and crumble. Time is running out. She's painted herself into a corner and it is about to get messy. Spoilers for Wednesday, April 17th. Say Eric Brady is perplexed at the state of his and his wife Sloane's finances. The bottom line is Sloane can't cover up all the money she's giving Leo. I mean, think about how much the Salem Inn probably costs for a month. He's got a suite and even if it was only 100 a night, which you know, a hotel like that. It's more than that, but it was only a hundred a night. That's still three grand a month, thousands of dollars. And Eric can't figure out why the budget doesn't balance because he doesn't know she's being blackmailed and they have basically a second child. They are supporting Leo Stark. We already know from executive producer Ken Corday that Sloan is going to give back the baby, but in such a way where Eric and Nicole don't find out the truth. So I had, I did a standalone video on this a while back. You can search for it in our day's roster or do a search on our channel for just Sloan Gives Baby Back. I think that was probably the title of it. And I talked about exactly how she could do it and get away with it. And I think it's still a valid thing. Nothing has changed since then that would that would change my theory about it. So Eric is going to keep digging and keep digging and keep digging, you know, instead of, I don't know, going out and getting a job and making some money. But he is, he's like, going to be like a dog with a bone and she's going to be outed and she's going to have to do something. So I don't know how she's going to explain the outflex of money, but time is a common and Nicole is going to get her baby back soon. And I think we're all excited about that. Hey, thanks for listening. Those are all of our predictions. Subscribe if you haven't. Definitely drop your comments on how you think the storylines are going. Agree, disagree. Tell me what you think. I love reading your comments. Come back soon. We're here talking days of our lives seven days a week on your number one soap opera channel on YouTube. And this is Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 